Welcome to Knowledge Box, my name is Alex, and did you know that according to anxietyuk.org, around 1 in 10 people at some point in their lives will suffer from an anxiety disorder? And judging by my YouTube analytics, that's around 1500 of the people who've watched my videos in the past. That's a lot of people. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves just yet. Anxiety, at a healthy level, is actually a perfectly normal, healthy and evolutionarily beneficial human emotion that everybody experiences at some point due to anything from public speaking to starting a new job to being attacked by a hippo. The roots of anxiety stem back to a time in our ancestral history when fear was almost always due to something physically life-threatening, like a wild animal or members of a rival tribe preparing to attack. Anxiety was a great way for our minds to tell our bodies to ready up to face whatever threat might be coming our way. Of course, the emotion was so genetically successful that we still experience it today, despite not having to deal with nearly as many physical threats as our ancestors. So what's actually going on in our heads? Well, anxiety begins in a part of the brain called the limbic system, which is a complex system of nerves that specialises in emotions like fear and pleasure, as well as drives such as hunger and libido. When an exterior threat is detected by the senses, a message is sent to a part of the limbic system called the hypothalamus, which is about the size of an almond and just below the thalamus. This creates a nervous signal which travels down to your adrenal glands, where the adrenal medulla release a hormone called epinephrine into the body, or as it's more commonly known, adrenaline. Your circulatory system is then responsible for causing this adrenaline to flow throughout the body, which triggers a whole bunch of different effects depending on which specific proteins it bonds to. For example, when epinephrine reaches the liver, it causes glucose, the single most important sugar in human metabolism, to be produced in order to supply the body with more energy so that it can sufficiently respond to whatever threat set off the reaction in the first place. Adrenaline also speeds up your breathing and increases your heart rate, allowing more oxygen into the body. The reason for this is because in order to deal with the situation at hand, you'll need to use your muscles more vigorously than usual. Through a process called aerobic respiration, this oxygen and the glucose I mentioned earlier can be turned into CO2, which you breathe out, water, which you lose mainly as sweat and by breathing out water vapour, and most importantly, energy. Epinephrine also causes a vasoconstriction of the blood vessels in your digestive system, as all that extra blood can be used in the vasodilation of those in your muscles. This means that your digestive system begins to shut down so that more blood and therefore more oxygen and glucose can be supplied to the muscles because in a life-threatening situation, the use of your muscles is a tad more important than digesting that cheap burger that you ate a few hours ago. And it's actually for this reason that you feel butterflies in your stomach when you're nervous because your digestive system is shutting down. So a single, valiant and almost annoyingly effective hormone, epinephrine, is capable of triggering all of these effects on your body, making it incredibly effective at almost instantaneously initiating the fight or flight response, which is the ability to either face the threat and fight it, or get the hell out of there ASAP. Because you have more blood in your muscles and a huge surge of extra energy that you can utilise via the physical exertions that fighting or flighting would entail. So here's a tip. The next time anxiety bears its ugly face and you want to reduce some of the immediate symptoms, try some mild physical exercise. By running on the spot or jumping up and down, you're using up some of the extra energy produced in the adrenaline rush. So there you have the biological process that takes place every time that you get anxious. But hang on a second, I said a while ago that all this happens when an exterior threat is perceived. Which is true, except in the case of an anxiety disorder. Sufferers of this unfortunate illness can experience this biological quagmire without being in any apparent danger at all. What's going on? Well, this is where the biology stops and the psychology begins. So if you want to learn about the slightly less pragmatic side of anxiety, I'll be making a sister video to this one discussing some of the main apparent psychological causes for anxiety disorders, including generalised anxiety disorder, OCD, PTSD and panic disorders. So if you're interested, I'll see you there. In the meantime, if you want to learn more about anxiety and the science behind it, I've left a ton of links in the description that you can check out and I hope you learned something interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.